In this episode, we help a viewer choose a reliable car under 200,000 Rand. And the Toyota Hilux Legend and Ford Ranger Wildtrak go head to head. And we advise a viewer who's been experiencing some bad luck with his Audi A4. Hello and welcome to Buyer's Guide. Every week, we try to provide you with useful advice, whether it relates to buying, selling or maintaining a vehicle. If you have a question for the team, that's us, you can send an email to buyersguide at ignitiontv.co.za and contain as much information as possible, as well as a good photo of yourself. And joining us in studio to help resolve those troubling automotive issues are two familiar faces in Buyer's Guide. Leon Loyson from Mahindra Joburg South and Martin Pretorius. Welcome gentlemen. Thanks, it's been a long time. Yeah, thanks nice for to have you back. Yeah, thanks for taking time out of your busy schedule to join us in studio. Thanks guys, much appreciated. All right, let's just get into our first question, which comes from Aubake, who is looking for a safe, reliable, practical car that is not prone to being hijacked. With a budget of 200,000 Rand, the car should last him for at least 10 years. He has his eyes set on the Suzuki Kizashi automatic, but he'd like to know if this would be a good buy. He's also open to other suggestions, but please, no Toyotas, and we know why. Well, I thought that was implied when you said not. When you right. said not. <laughs> <laughs> Non-hijacking cars. Isn't it sad that some of the best cars that we have in this country we can't drive because some thug wants to steal it? Which is why I sold two Toyotas of my own last year. Yeah. So what do you think of the Kazashi? It's a lovely car, but it's got the wrong model. Okay. Mm -hmm. Not an auto. Because that auto is a CVT, and it, it will now be at that age where the CVT will start acting up and cost him 70 grand to fix. So it's an expensive car in terms of things like that. Well, it's not an expensive one. car. If you can find a manual one, fantastic. It's a lovely car. I drove the Kizashi years ago. It's a wonderful car. Um, well equipped, well appointed, well made, but not with the CBT, not yeah. on the long term. Leon, what's your feelings? No, look, that car is like a 2013, 20, I don't know when they were discontinued, yeah. but like you're looking around at time, and they're not, they're not, even the auto is nowhere near 200,000 Rand. You pick them up for like 140, 150. Yeah. 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 So maybe you can use the other 50 grand to put away to like an extended <laughs> warranty because if you want to keep the car for 10 years, that car is going to be 20 years old or yeah, 20 years old yeah. when, when it eventually old. parts ways with it. And it's a 2.4, and I think it's very heavy on juice. I yeah. don't think it's going to be a car that's going to be light and fuel. But they really say his eyes are glued or her eyes are glued. I don't know if it's a male or female. But the, the eyes are glued on that Suzuki Kazashi. So, so I don't know, you know. They're willing to have different options or opinions. I mean, it was in its day, it was a good car. Sure. But I mean, considering, like Martin says, you know, it's a CVT gearbox. If it gives troubles, it's expensive. The one thing that concerns me about a car like that, not only that one, but anything that never sold in, in yeah. volume, no, when you want parts for it, you're, you're stuck with getting to the dealer. The dealers, as you know, you're a dealer. You don't oh, keep yeah, parts for uh, cars that you only sold 20 of. You'll have to get from the factory. and and. Sometimes you can't get from the factory, they have to import the stuff. You'll yes. get it, but it's, it becomes a problem. So l let's suggest something else around the 200,000 Rand. If you're a Suzuki, Suzuki fan, I would say go look at something like a Suzuki Bellino because for 200 grand budget, you'll get one which is most probably a year or two old with very low mileage. Will they get the automatic? Yeah, you'll get the well, automatic. Right. Okay, but well, it's a four speed auto tragic. Yeah. Yes, but I mean, <laughs> Martin, you, you're a Windergat and you want to race around. But yeah, I, I, want to drive. I yeah. actually have another suggestion. Yeah. For that same kind of money, you can get a fairly late model Mazda 3. Yeah, very good car. Even the 1.6. Even the 1.6. Well, 1.6 with a manual. Normally aspirated engine. 1.6 with Nothing an auto. Nothing much to go wrong. Exactly. Yep. I'd say look for uh, like 2014, 2015-ish. So slightly newer than the Kazashi, but you can get a 2-litre auto Mazda 3 for about the same money. Mm. And it's a safe bet. It's a safe it's bet. Low it's risk. Desire. You, if you're going to go a little bit, uh, stretch your budget a bit more, but go brand new. You know, it's, I know it's 10% more, but yeah. you can get a Desire Automatic. I think it's like 225, 229 around there. And there's different options. I mean, 20, 2019 Hyundai Accent. There's a lot of different cars you can go for. Yeah. Yeah. But I wouldn't go for the Suzuki Gazashi. <laughs> I just wouldn't. I mean, I mentioned that car about seven years ago on this very show. Uh, the Suzuki Kazashi, and I was quite impressed that I could actually articulate myself on the show with that name of that, that car. But I mean, it's, I just, Times have moved on. Petrol, I wouldn't, yeah. Uh, yeah. I wouldn't touch it. Okay, so our advice is basically stay away from that and then take the, I think Martin's idea of a Mazda 3 is a great idea. It's a yeah. safe car, it's reliable. Japanese, it's brilliant. Yeah. Options. Okay, I'm going to move on to our next question. It's from a first time buyer in his 20s. Moses is looking for a used car in which to tackle the daily commute to and from work. So it has to be, of course, 
fuel efficient and reliable. Unfortunately, he's been rejected for financing as he works on contract basis. So it would have to be a cash purchase. Ideally, he'd like to get into an older BMW 1 Series, but he realizes that this won't be the most financially practical. He can spend up to 125,000 Rand and is keen on getting in something similar to a VW Polo, but preferably non-German. So obviously he wants to stay away from the Polo because of the high risk. Uh, Leon. But he likes the 1 Series. Yeah, but I mean, 125 <laughs> grand buys you a piece so of junk one. one it's series. a bad yes. idea, at least. Oh, Very uh, bad idea. Look, I mean, uh, but by 125 grand, you don't get a hell of a lot. So, I mean, it's it's just, uh, and I see he intends to keep the car for one to five years. It's quite a wide span. You know? Yeah, well, if he buys a one it's, series, it's a contract. He'll have it for three months and then he'll be in the garage for the next five years. There we go. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, you know, but I would put him in an uh, older Suzuki Swift. There we go. Yeah. For 125k, yeah, four four you keep go. it for four. You definitely be able to keep it for more than five years. Or it's a reliable. Or a Ford Figure. Oh, Ford Figure. That's another good option so there. I went online, put in a little budget there. Okay, I'm going to spend 120 to 150 yeah. grand to see what I can buy in that sort of budget, and I come up with some great cars: Ford Fiesta, and the Ford Figure. Not an EcoBoost. Not an EcoBoost. No, Not an EcoBoost. A basic Fiesta 1.4. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a great car if you like that shape, or the Ford Figure. You mentioned the figure. Yeah. It's a great little car. It does everything right. No, 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 no frills. turbocharge, no frills, whatever. Great, reliable car. Light on fuel. It's not going to get stolen. Well, yeah. Unlikely to get stolen. Good parts availability. <laughs> it's a big commitment. Unlikely. I, you know. I, like, I yeah. like the way you corrected yourself there. Yeah. Another one then, uh, I-10. You can pick an I-10. Yep. I-20. Yeah. And then, of course, uh, I look 2015 Hyundai Accent. Mm -hmm. So you, Hyundai Accent's a great car. It looks very similar to the... Um, the Elantra, it's very yeah, similar Elantra, stylings. Yeah. It's a pretty, pretty car. It's a really good car to drive. Very reliable. And you know, you can pick that up in that, that price range. If he wants to definitely not have any hassle, I'll put him in a Honda Jazz. Yeah. Look, again, manual. Look, the manual Honda Jazz. You know, there again, I would disagree with you because I find that the automatics are very reliable. We have very little problem with them. Uh, if you buy a Honda Jazz or you own a Honda Jazz or you own any car with a CVT gearbox, the, the trick to them to keep them reliable change the gearbox oil on the Hondas is every 40,000 kilometers, yeah. they don't give trouble. We actually have one in my fleet that we loan out to customers or whatever, mm. and it's an auto that's never given us a day's trouble. Problem, yeah. Only problem is in this price range, the car's service history might be uncertain. And yeah. if that CVT has skipped a service or two... Yeah, spend the money, get it done. Uh, it's yeah. too late already. Well, By the one the thing time that you get to 80,000 Ks on the same transmission oil, you know it will fail at around 100,000. Yeah. Well, I must say that one other car to chuck in there, although it is a bit of a risky car in terms of theft, is the Etios, which is a great little car. Yeah, but it's hijack magnets. Yeah, yeah. hijack yeah. Uh, Uber. Yeah. Uber Nato. So there, there's a couple of cars. I would certainly say don't buy a 1 Series BMW. Yes. Not because it's a bad car, but because 125,000 Rand buys you an old one with most probably 200,000 Ks on it. It will ruin your, fun, your, your finances. Yeah. Guaranteed. Yeah. <laughs> Stay tuned because after the break, we go in search for a dependable. Travel Road Companion. And we help a viewer who'd like to enjoy peace of mind motoring in his retirement. Welcome back to Buyer's Guide. Our next viewer hails from Limpopo and he needs a vehicle that he can cope with regular gravel road trips. Hope is a first time buyer with a budget of between 400 and 500,000 Rand and he's considering getting into a double cab bucky. He's interested in the Toyota Hydra. Hilux, I said hijacks. Let's just change that name. Hi, hi, hijack legend. Go to Hilux, legend. Hijack. Hijack legend. Hijack legend. Or <laughs> the Ford Ranger Wild Track. Mm. And he would like to get into a fairly new vehicle from a trusted dealer. I just hope Toyota don't call us because it was a hard time. <laughs> well, you know, I mean, they don't have an argument, do eh? oh, no, they? do. What do you think? I'm going to go slightly offbeat, yeah? Sure. Let's I know say. what you're going to say. What? You're going to say go buy a GWM P series? No, don't steal my You're going to say go buy a new okay. no, I'm actually going to say go buy a lightly used Mitsubishi Triton. Very good, yeah. yeah. That was Segi was going to tell us. Cool. That I was, is I was headed in that way after these. If you can find one. If you can find yeah. one. Yeah. Um, but they are very underrated vehicles. Yes. They are hugely capable technically, and they don't have, as far as I'm aware, any glaring design flaws either. Yeah. I'm we can buy a Fiat, what's it, setback. Or fullback. <laughs> full full yes, because it's a Fiat, so it will have depreciated a lot more. Yes, yeah. So, so you can probably setback, get a yes. high spec 2.4 4x4 yeah. setback for similar money to a uh, fairly old or yeah. much Triton. older. Triton. 
Yeah. And it's the same vehicle. It's the same thing. So I looked, I looked so online. It's not the prettiest thing, but it's hugely capable yeah. and it will run it's forever. It's very capable. Look after it. It's very, very capable. So looking online for Hiluxes and Rangers, they're all over 100,000 kilometers yeah. if you're going to spend four to 500,000 Rand. Mm. Rangers, you can buy a basic double cab Ranger for f like 420,000. A Hilux, 2018 Hilux with uh, h over 100,000 kilometers on it. That's going to get you like 420,000 Rand. Yeah. Or you could go buy a 2023 GWMP series double cab Bucky, which I actually think is also quite under underrated. You can literally buy that car with 100 kilometers on it. So it's mm -hmm. brand new. Mm -hmm. you, can, you get a five year 150,000 warranty, I think, with it. Mm -hmm. I think that's a great option to buy. It's, it's very underrated, Bucky. It's super value for money. And you're going to get literally a brand new car as opposed to one that's four or five years old. Yeah. So are you buying a Hilux or a Ranger out of warranty, both are fairly high risk in terms of theft, or you go and buy GWM, or, or you go to Leon and you buy, what, was, you, you what are you going to say? <laughs> <laughs> Give you a chance. Mate, and you come to Mahindra Joburg South and you come sit and talk to me and we put you in a brand new Mahindra crew. It's got everything. It's even got a, an armadillo on the back or security lid. Yeah. You know, which is great because then your stuff in your cargo area is covered under your insurance. And if fuel consumption is important, that's brilliant. you can't really go better than that main drive. That's, that's really, really good. Um, so what motor is that? That's it's got, got a 2.2 MOC. It's 103 kilowatts okay. and 310 Newton meters, which on paper sounds like nothing. But, you know, I've been 16 years at Toyota um, and the power delivery of that vehicle, five up going to Dolstrom on holiday, no issues. 130 cruise yeah. control on, uh, giving me 13.5 kilometers to a litre. So it's good. And that was a big 4x4 double. It's great right on fuel. Yeah. Yeah. Our random uh, it's is a long termer as well. It really is. is. And, I'm, and I'm not paying Martin, by the way. <laughs> but <laughs> so now, if you're driving like on, it. but I if, if this person's driving on um, dirt roads all the time, they're not really worried too much about speed, are they? So it doesn't matter if you get a powerful one or not. You want something that's really, you know, really, really good. And I know that, that Mahindra is excellent off road. I, I, I've driven mine Solid. for, I drove mine for 10,000 cars. And I honestly can say that value for money, um, and not just because I work for the company, value for money, there's just nothing in my opinion that sits with it. Yeah. You know, if, you guys, if, if you do believe there is something, then great. I'm going to issue in... You know, your, your opinion, my opinion. Definitely something but to look around. And in Lompa, there's I'd a like lot of dealers there as well. Because he yeah. wants to keep it for 10 years. Yeah. So it must have some kind of a track history, whereas the Toyota, undoubtedly. Won't keep it for 10 years, it yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 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 I checked Toyota, yeah. But the Toyota, Toyota oh, if he was lucky enough, <laughs> he'd, it would be with it 100,000 when he bought it or 150,000 kilometers on the clock when he bought it. Yeah. He'd be able to keep it for 10 years and above yeah. and more. Yeah. So, but thanks for mentioning that the Mahindra I, I, has yeah, proven it's itself it's over the past. I think that years. you know, if you look at the, the Ford, it's a good vehicle. If you look at the Hilux, it's an excellent vehicle. Most probably the best Bucky of the lot. But mm. there comes with issues with it. Um, but now, if you're looking at spending four to five hundred thousand rand, you can buy second-hand ones of those with lots of mileage on, or you go along and literally buy a brand new vehicle with warranty that you know for the next five years. If anything goes wrong with it, you take it back to the dealer and say, fix it, please. It's under warranty. Your service plan is a five-year. What is the service plan on the service plan is four years, 120, but you can extend that by two years, unlimited kilometers. So effectively, you get a six-year, unlimited kilometer warranty uh, for a buy-in, I think it was 2,800 rand once off. That's for nothing. That's, so that's for free. Eh? So it's like it's for an oil change. Yeah. It's, it's, it is ridiculous. Um, so unlimited kilometers, in other words, if I do 100,000 k's a year. You do a million kilometers. I do 100,000 kilometers a year inside that six years. There we go. It's fine. It's covered. If you do 250,000 kilometers in that six years, you're covered. Yeah. Now, granted, with any warranty, there are exclusions. It's not just, we don't, you know, there are obviously exclusion warranties. So there, there is for you some wonderful options to go and have a look at. You know, thinking a little bit out of the box, getting great value for money vehicles in your budget. Go and have do your homework. Okay. Okay. Right. Our next question is from Luke. He needs advice on whether his father will soon be retiring, should keep or replace his current vehicles. His fleet consists of a 2018 Toyota RAV4 2.0-litre GX with 46,000 kilometers on the clock and a 2007 Nissan Tida 1.6 Auto with 160,000 kilometers on the clock. He has an extra 100,000 Rand to top in on the trade-in value of the vehicle. He's keen on the Toyota Starlet and Suzuki Bellino. Come on, guys, this is a no-brainer. I wouldn't yeah, sell I mean, the, the, I wouldn't sell the, the Toyota. Rav. Before you say anything, yes. guys, Luke. <sighs> I am your father. 
<laughs> Sorry, couldn't resist that. You couldn't one. resist that one. Could <laughs> you? Bad joke. Okay. Could you? Bad oh, joke. Bad joke. Daddy That's joke. a dad joke. <laughs> yeah, but he's helping his dad <laughs> anyway. He's, he's helping his dad. All right. You know, he must. My opinion, mm -hmm. definitely keep the RAV4. Yes. 46,000 kilometers, that's practically brand new. Yes, yeah. Yeah. and those definitely. cars also have a very well-proven record yes. for long-term durability mm. and affordable maintenance. Yeah, they're not the lightest on fuel, but at that mileage, and he already has it, I just... I just wouldn't keep think, the yeah, keep, keep the, the RAV. And when you're going to go throw 100,000 Rand now down the toilet, um, those two cars together, I worked it out, you're looking at anything between 280 to 320. If you take, uh, sorry, more, uh, it's, you're looking there at about 400,000, you know, if you, if you trade both cars, of them yeah. in. If you trade both of them, because I looked at the RAV, sorry, my math's up the pole, 300,000. So you're looking at 235 and 60, or even up yeah. to 245 and 60,000 Rand for the two cars. So you might not even have to throw 100,000 Rand in, and you could still find a vehicle that he, that he likes, but then you have to trade it ke cleverly and push for his price, because the RAV is worth gold. And the Tita's worth gold. I don't know if the Tita's give issues, the auto, no, but no, I, I think those cars are reliable, strong The biggest cars. problem that we have with Nissan Tita's is that they don't have a temperature gauge. Yes. Oh, okay. And they overheat and blow the head gaskets and warp so their blocks. So so it and the only time that red light starts flashing is when is the car's shot anyway. And it's also, they're ugly as the truth. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I mean, they make a Seggy look pretty. So yes. that's and no, any nothing. car that makes me look pretty is an awesome <laughs> car. <laughs> I, I, I would just keep pretty. the RAV4. I mean, yeah. if you said the RAV4 done 460,000 Ks, I'd say fine. Yeah. But keep the RAV4. I, I can't see the reason for anyone wanting to and trade in if he wants a RAV4 with yeah. 46,000 two cars, keep the RAV4, sell the Tita, yeah. Yeah. and buy a, a five-year-old Bellina. Yeah, because the Bellina is a great little car. It's a fantastic car. It's better the than Toyota Bellina. Toyota, 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 Zuki Starlet, yes. Toy, Zuki Toy, Toy Zuki Starlino. Yeah, it's the same car. Yeah. <laughs> same car, yeah. So if you need two cars, do that. Otherwise, just d ditch, the, ditch the thing and put, put the money towards yeah. insurance on the Toyota. Don't get rid of the RAV4. Well, that would be a criminal. Oh, no, that would that'd be. be no, we don't know if it's manual or CVT, but it's irrespective. Doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Such like you said, car. do the CVT, make sure you do your oil changes and you yeah, and you're styling. You know? yeah. All right, we're going to go to a short ad break, but when we get back, we advise a viewer on a suitable time to replace the timing chain on his Mercedes-Benz C-Class. And is it normal for an eight-year-old Audi A4 to cost you an arm and a leg to maintain? Hello and thank you for tuning into Buyer's Guide. Vaughan is a 2013 Mercedes-Benz C200 compressor with 106,000 kilometers on the clock. He's been told that at this mileage, the timing chain and gears should be replaced. As this repair is likely to cost him 25,000 Rand, he would like to know if the panel, that's you guys, mm -hmm. agrees that it's necessary to replace the parts. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Because if you don't, it, your 25 grand repair bill turns into a 90,000 grand repair bill. <laughs> there we go. But the good news is you don't have to do it at the dealership. There are aftermarket parts available and many private workshops will be able to do this job. It's very yeah. common failure on these things between 100 and 120,000. But you days. hear this failure coming. Not always. You, you do. You hear it coming and the they engine management light comes yeah. on they and the diagnostics the always battle. shows you camshaft sensor. Now, I've had clever mechanics tell me, oh, just replace the camshaft sensor. No. But it isn't that. No, it's but not that. And these are the little things you pick up. Yeah. But if he's going to only spend 25K to do the chain, do it. That's, that's I'd well be very worth surprised if Mercedes do it for 25K. No, it's not going to be Mercedes. 25K is not Mercedes. No. Yeah. But if, if it is, uh, has been serviced at Mercedes for its whole life, and you've only done 106,000 kilometers, I know it is a 10-year-old car, I would actually approach um, Mercedes will, and yeah. say, I want a goodwill repair because this is a design fault. Yes. Yep. And it was a design fault in the previous generation and in the new... They uh, didn't want you to change the design. design. And it's the biggest the problem because the gears wear and the chains wear. And the gears alone, I think, are roughly 25,000 Rand from Mercedes. Mercedes, yeah. yes. Yeah. So any M271 engine. Yes. And for that matter, the M272 V6 as yes. well. They suffer the same ailment. Yes. Just yep. get it done because it's otherwise a solid car and the engine is otherwise not terribly problematic. But what, what Siggy says is, is quite correct as well sometimes. Often what we find them coming into our workshop, they've got an engine management light that comes on, and when we diagnose, diagnose it, it'll say cam crank correlation, yes. which means yeah. they are not uh, synchronized, yeah. or there'll be a camshaft sensor failure, which Siggy says, um, 
sometimes it does give you a warning. So if you're not having, because I've had some of those cars which are no at our workshop, 250,000 kilometers, and they haven't failed. I think the I think what happened with Mercedes, I'm speculating here, but I think when they manufacture the engines, they, they don't have one supplier who supplies chains and gears to them. Mm -hmm. They may have a number of different mm. suppliers, and you may find the one supplier is inferior to some of the others, so you maybe get lucky and get one that doesn't have a problem chain. But uh, just get it checked out. If you're not getting any warning lights and there's no rattles, often what happens is well, we take the tappet covers off the cars and inspect them to make sure there's no uh, visible wear on them on or on the gears. gears, the gears are worn. If they're not, you can you can drive it along like that, but you should get a warning. It's very unusual that they actually do just but they suddenly should actually just break. You normally do instead of just warning. telling the guy, look, at 106,000 or 100,000 Ks, you have to do this repair. Why don't you do a check first before yeah. you do that? Yeah. Oh, okay, do a visible safe. check. Just do it. I know. It's not your money, buddy. <laughs> yeah, true. It's money. It's the, yeah. First, the first hit's always the best hit. Yeah. Once you start, if you don't do the 25 grand, then you can, like you said, that little baby grows up and you end up with a 90 grand bull or whatever. Yeah, it is. certainly. I mean, when it's when it does break and it damages the bends all the valves and everything. There we go. Engine, yeah. yeah, it's it's a lot of money to get big fixed. Tears. So uh, you know, way up. If you want the peace of mind, have it done or get it checked properly to make sure that there's no wear with them. And uh, yeah, we're going to end off things with a question from Naresh, not so proud owner of a 2014 Audi A4 1.8T. You and a lot of other people. At 100,000 <laughs> kilometers, the thermostat had to be replaced. Then at about 145,000, the thermostat was replaced again, this time in conjunction with the water pump. Just 3,000 kilometers later, the control unit and harness had to be replaced. So since the freeway plan has expired, the car has cost him uh, about 100,000 rand, just in repairs. Is this normal for this type of car? Or has Naresh simply been unlucky with his A4? Is this normal to spend so little, like 100,000 rand on <laughs> Yes! <laughs> he you got know, lucky. This guy's okay. lucky. He's so not unlucky. If you look in the used car market, you can see these Audis on, the, on sale 150,000 rand or less. Yeah. And there's a reason why they are this cheap. They run the E888 engine, unfortunately, which is known for a number of design flaws. The, 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 the oil cooler setup, um, and then critically as well, the timing chain setup. Yeah. Um, it's, it, the whole thing is loaded with plastic bits. And as the engine ages, these plastic bits become brittle. Mm. And as they become brittle, they start chipping off. And sometimes it just goes into the radiator and it lies there. Other, well, other times it goes into the lubrication system and it logs up the oil pickup, for instance. And that's just one failure mode. Yeah. Um, you know, we can't really. There sorry, are so uh, many but we can't really problems with these blame, engines. We can't blame Audi for the water in his uh, uh, ECU. Uh, ECU yeah. and uh, yeah, no. that's, that there is. I've never, that heard, is of that. I've never heard, of that. heard of that. You know, as well, well, I have, but that usually comes from some coolant temperature sensor, and the water creeps up through the coolant temperature through sensor the harness. Through the harness. Into the harness. Um, I've heard of that. The chances are that the ECU control unit box under the bonnet was opened at some stage to cure one of these problems, yeah. and the seals weren't replaced properly. Yeah, and, and it yeah, rained, and just just they just rained the and the rain went. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, that's typically what I'd say most likely happened there, but these engines themselves have major, major design flaws. It's probably one of the worst engines you can buy in a modern day car, Yes, quite frankly. Yes. I would so say... Set while the car is going, while it's this working, yeah. sell it. Yeah, oh. and that would make you a very lucky guy. Would <laughs> you take a trade in on one of those Audi A4s? Uh, not look. Unfortunately, the customers are really going to swear at us when we give them a price because yes. we are, we obviously aware look of at aware trade aware covers aware. from the guys that know of the, with a the know-how. You're going to phone Audi and you're going to say, "Listen, what you can offer me for this car?" And after no. five minutes, when the guys finish laughing, you're not going to know that you're not going to get a trade cover from him. Mm -hmm. So then the alarm bells start going off then we'll dig deeper. So you guys are speaking very technically. I'm not technically minded whatsoever with regards to cars, but I know the specs and things. So now you guys have just raised the alarm bell. So I think any Audi that I trade in for the next 20 years of my career, I'm going to, doesn't matter which Audi it is, I think I'll just double check with it's the guys. You know, the one thing I've with the Audis, <coughs> the, A4, the A4, the petrol versions, the 1.8 and the 2 litres are terrible. But <laughs> the 2 litre diesels, actually very good yes. very few issues with those yeah. it may be worthwhile himself to go and trade if he likes the a4 because actually when they're going nicely they're lovely cars to drive Audi was an Audi. is to trade it in on say a diesel version you're going to get better fuel consumption a reliable engine 
and uh, you must probably get yeah, a better deal on your trading. Move the problems provided, back to Audi. Provided you make sure that the plastic fittings on the cooling system have been replaced, yeah. and there's an irradiator in there, and the oil cooling heat exchanger unit's been replaced as well. But on, I must say, on, on, the, on the diesel <laughs> versions, those sort of problems, I mean, we do quite a lot in our workshops, mm -hmm. and I have very, 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 very few issues with the with the turbo diesel engines. Very little problem. Some of them have done three, four hundred thousand kilometers. Mm. Petrol engines, if you've done three, four hundred thousand kilometers, it's had three engines yeah. <laughs> to yeah. do that. So certainly, uh, maybe it's worthwhile to trade it in on a diesel version if you like the A4. Um, but back to your question, is it normal? Yes, it's quite normal. But, um, you've only <laughs> just started. This is just the start this is of the your start. problem. Yeah. Sell it. Uh, so while it's running, ditch it. Ditch it. Until next time, remember, please, let's buckle up and don't drive like an idiot. Thank you very much.